Toyota's new engine. Is this the end for the EV industry? The engine is the heart of the vehicle because without it, the vehicle cannot move. Yet automobile manufacturers are not satisfied with simply installing an engine in a vehicle. They aspire to outperform their competitors by putting in the best. This is why Toyota is always improving its automobile engines. Welcome back to EV Scene. In today's video, we will be seeing how Toyota's new engine causes the end of the EV industry. This is surely going to carry some big information because in today's scenario, every automobile is being changed to EV vehicles. Before getting into the video, subscribe to our channel for more such amazing content. First of all, you might want to pause before burning a match anywhere near your hydrogen-powered automobile because it is incredibly flammable. It's also challenging to store and process, which may be a hassle. Not to be overlooked is nitrous oxide, which is released during combustion. Even while it might not be as harmful as carbon monoxide, the EPA nevertheless classifies it as a pollutant. What exactly is Toyota's new engine, and how powerful is it? Keep tuned as we bring you Toyota's incredible new engine that will alter everything. Toyota is one of the world's leading automakers. The corporation sold about 10.5 million vehicles last year, despite the fact that the industry as a whole was struggling due to the COVID-19 outbreak and chip scarcity. How did Toyota earn the trust of millions of people throughout the world? There are various causes for this. Despite increased competition, Toyota continues to produce high-quality vehicles, with models ranking among the best autos in practically every category. Despite its long history of tumultuous communication on electric vehicles, Toyota's message was unequivocal. This is a technological shift, not just another vehicle-making exercise. It means that manufacturing will undergo a comprehensive redesign rather than incremental movements away from the internal combustion engine. Sato admitted that the basic changes, how energy is produced and used, as well as aerodynamics, will need the adaptation of each component and procedure for EVs. This insight, as well as its public acceptance, is critical. EVs aren't just another car with a different fuel or power source that can be manufactured at current plants, as automakers around the world hurry to meet out put targets while investing billions of dollars in electrification, this is a much needed reality check. There is another aspect to EV production. The new Toyota strategy is likewise centered on intelligent vehicles and related technology. According to Simon Humphreys, the new chief branding officer, customers demand control over their own experiences, which means the company will have to accelerate the integration of hardware and software so that drivers may tailor EVs to theirs specific needs. These vehicles will either have to imitate what a tiny pickup truck in Thailand or gas guzzlers in America do for drivers, or they would have to replace the compact, strong vehicles designed for Indian roads. Getting clients to adopt EVs and buy into the technical transformation will need the organization to keep up with this behavioral shift. Toyota will increase its efforts in this regard. Another point in Toyota's advantage is the availability of replacement parts. You don't want to buy a car and then have to wait months for a replaceable part from the producing nation in case of a repair. The brand is well known all around the world. Hence, whether you drive a Toyota in a rural corner of South Africa or a town in Bangladesh, your dealer will have spare parts accessible. Also, mechanics that are familiar with Toyota vehicles are widely available, so you can be confident that you will receive technical assistance when your vehicle requires repair. Toyota, on the other hand, has raised the bar with the debut of the Dynamic Force engine. This new engine is the thermal efficiency king. To completely appreciate this revolutionary engine, it is necessary to first comprehend petrol thermal efficiency. The phrase refers to the amount of potential energy in petrol that is transformed into power that may be used to propel your car. But there's an issue with the configuration I just explained. As combustion occurs, part of the power is lost due to friction and excess heat. This means that the average petrol combustion engine operates at around 35% thermal efficiency. Engineers have been working relentlessly for over a century to decrease energy waste and shift as much of the energy in petrol to driving the car or powering your AC as possible. 
According to the sources, the assessment was prompted in part by the realization among certain Toyota engineers and executives that Toyota was losing the manufacturing cost battle against Tesla on EVs. According to the four sources, Toyota's strategy expected that demand for EVs would not take off for several decades. Toyota created ETNGA so that electric vehicles may be manufactured on the same assembly line as petrol vehicles and hybrids. It made sense based on the calculation that Toyota would need to sell nearly 3.5 million EVs per year by 2030, roughly one-third of its present worldwide sales, to remain competitive according to the sources. This might allow Toyota to lower the size and weight of an EV battery pack while saving thousands of dollars per car, according to one person familiar with the topic, making it a high priority for Toyota suppliers Denso and Isen. When Toyota acquired a share in Tesla and the two companies partnered to build a battery electric version of the RAV4, many Toyota engineers felt Tesla's technology posed no danger, according to two people. Toyota engineers looked at every stage of the engine's cycle and sought to discover methods to make it not just more efficient in terms of petrol savings. Toyota sought inspiration from a source where efficiency is paramount, Formula One. To accomplish high-speed combustion, the firm adopted many technologies from racing automobiles. Three modifications in particular assisted Toyota in achieving high-speed combustion and ensuring the air-fuel combination burns fully, producing greater power with each combustion. The angle of the intake valve, laser-clad valve seats, and cylinder dimensions are among the improvements. The angle of the intake valve and the form of the intake port direct the air-fuel combination in a certain pattern to disperse it more evenly inside the cylinder, resulting in greater power and less waste. Second, the laser-clad valve seats enable optimum valve angle and airflow direction, resulting in tumble flow, a more regulated swirl pattern in the combustion chamber that distributes the air-fuel mixture more uniformly ahead of the compression. Meanwhile, the pistons have a specific surface to decrease friction, an electronic thermostat works with an electric water pump to manage temperature for maximum efficiency, variable valve timing assures ideal power versus efficiency, and a greater compression ratio boosts efficiency even further. All of these strategies add up to a world-leading thermal efficiency of 41% in hybrid applications and 40% in gas-only vehicles, as well as greater torque and power at any engine speed and reduced fuel efficiency and emissions. Toyota's new dynamic force engine allows it to compete in the efficiency race for every percentage point. Although Toyota now offers automobiles using hydrogen fuel, there are too many manufacturing issues to make them widely accessible. In order for the manufacturing network to spread like foam and for large-scale building processes of these prototypes to begin, the production costs of this liquid should be reduced and companies should have access to it. The demand for this kind of goods will rise as a result. Toyota offers a hydrogen internal combustion engine as an option. Toyota engineers didn't stop there. In order to increase the thermal efficiency of the new dynamic force engines, they also used other time-tested techniques. In order to increase economy and smooth operation while driving normally, Toyota's D4S fuel injection system combines direct and port injection. Nevertheless, when maximum power is required, only direct injection is used. You see, the lithium and nickel that are necessary for the production of EV batteries are not needed by the Toyota hydrogen engine nearly as much. It also has a battery, however it is much smaller than the battery in an electric vehicle. In northern Japan, the Corolla Cross H2 concept car is now being evaluated in the real world and tested in winter driving conditions. With such high aspirations for hydrogen, the Japanese government also plans to put 200,000 fuel cell powered automobiles on the road by 2025 and 800,000 by 2030, with more recharging stations being built all throughout the nation. With that, we come to a close. Do you think Toyota's newest engine is better than EV vehicles? Comment your thoughts below. If you enjoyed the video, like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more videos. Watch other videos from our playlists too. Bye!